Hello, this is Simzart, an illustrator and comic book artist. Today, I'm going to briefly show how to give a digital watercolor look to an illustration. In the previous video, we saw how to open a new project and set our layers, how to make and add a texture to our project, how some of my favorite blending modes works, and how to use two useful tools, the clipping masks and lock transparent pixels. In this video, we'll see how to put together all this information to make an illustration. As always, everything starts from an idea. In this case, we will create a front view of the character using a default 3D model in Clip Studio Paint as base for our drawing. The models are available in Window, Material, Material Body Type. In this window, we can drag and drop the front model and place it on our canvas. Then we can lower the opacity of the 3D layer and lock it by clicking on the icon in the layer window. Once we have our model and an idea of the character, we can finally start drawing. For this illustration, we are going for a frontal character, but the composition can change, of course, based on your preference. I will place the character in the middle, making sure that both head and feet are not gonna be cut away. I will also add a witch hat, so I will keep some space to make it fit. We can always resize anytime, using the transform tools available in Clip Studio Paint. The sketch is going to be rough and doesn't have to necessarily be precise. The important aspect of this part is to make sure that the arrangement of the object on the canvas is pleasing and balanced. The outlines are going to be following what we sketched. I will turn the sketch in blue by going in the layer property window and activating the layer color, leaving it set to blue. At this point, let's redraw our piece in a cleaner way, making sure to give a nice rhythm and weight to the lines. It's important to not lose too much of the original energy of the initial sketch. Once we have a nice and clean line art, let's move to the coloring part. To color our piece, we are going to use a limited color palette. I will use the base tone yellow and then I will pick colors in the analogous and complementary area to select the rest of the tones. As a brush, I will use some custom brushes, but any brush that has a control over transparency is going to be good. The brush can also have or not a texture depending on the result we're going for. What's going to give a great difference is the texture that we placed on top of our color layer. The mix between brushes and global texture is going to give watercolor vibes to our piece. I'll first color with a flat brush the silhouette of the character on an empty layer that I'm going to hide and keep there in case I will need to quickly select the character again in the future. To select the character, I will control plus click the thumbnail of the selection layer. This will automatically activate the selection. On a new layer, I will paint the character with a flat color and then, after locking the transparency of the flat layer, I'm going to carefully paint the individual colors of the single parts of the image. After the flat colors are complete, I will make a new layer and add some shadows, setting the layer to multiply. Then, some highlights creating a new layer and setting it to soft light. Finally, on a layer set above the line art and set to normal, I will add some final touches with a brush painting over the line art and the colors. The final step of our process is some color correction. We can color correct our piece by placing the adjustment layers located in Layer, New Correction Layer, above or below the texture layers. If placed above the texture, it's going to affect also the texture layer, while placed under, it's only going to change the colors without enhancing the texture in any way. 
Choosing this correction wisely and keeping them as light as possible is recommended. After we have completed our piece, we can export the picture by going to File, Export Single Layer JPEG and selecting the scale ratio we prefer and the quality of our JPEG. Of course, we can save the picture in many formats, but this is a topic for another day. With these final effects and our picture safely saved on our PC, we completed this tutorial. If you have any questions, I recommend leaving a comment down below anytime and following the Clip Studio Paint channel. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time.